I'm also the moderator, so I'm going to introduce Jeffrey Suhu, who's from the University of Colorado, and he's going to be talking about diet and exercise and glaucoma. Thanks, Dr. Lin. Uh, thanks to the organizers for inviting me to speak today. Uh, I'll be talking, as Shan said, about diet and exercise and the role in glaucoma. Um, I have no financial disclosures. You know, I think one thing that's, uh, as Shan just said, the treatment for glaucoma, as we know, is to lower IOP, but I often get asked, and I'm sure many of you have asked your doctors, well, what else can I do? One of the most frustrating things about glaucoma is early on, it's often an asymptomatic disease, and it requires this partnership between the patient and the physician, as you just heard on the last panel. Um, but, you know, if it's a disease that you can't experience, unless your eye pressure drastically changes, you can't feel that change in eye pressure. And it's, I think, it, of course, quite frustrating for patients to not feel like they have any control. And so they're often asking me, well, what else can I do? I'm already taking my eye drops. I set my alarm. I take it at the exact same time every day, even if I'm in a different time zone. So, you know, what can I do? How do I control it? In terms of diet and, and BMI or body mass index, which is a calculation based on your height and weight, increased obesity has been linked to increased IOP, but the mechanism is a little bit unclear. There's some thought that there's some oxidative stress associated with being overweight that leads to malfunction of the trachealar meshwork. There might also be increased orbital fat deposition that impedes aqueous outflow and increases your IOP, or some dysregulation of the blood flow behind the eye. But the actual relationship between BMI and open angle glaucoma is very unclear. There are studies that have shown a negative association, some that have shown a positive association, and some that showed no association. So really, no clear evidence specifically. Now that being said, you know, obesity obviously has other side effects in terms of your overall health, and so maintaining a healthy weight is a good idea really for any condition. We'll talk about different types of exercise. So aerobic exercise has been shown to decrease IOP, and strength training and yoga can both increase IOP in certain situations. Once again, things that are good for your overall health are likely to be good for glaucoma. Aerobic exercise improves your kind of blood flow, your systemic circulation. And one of the theories in glaucoma, as Dr. Lin was just saying, is, well, maybe sometimes we're really just not getting enough perfusion to the optic nerve. And if there's not enough oxygen and nutrients getting to the optic nerve, then that can be a factor in glaucoma as well, sort of separate from IOP in some way. And so anything that improves your systemic perfusion is likely to be good for glaucoma as well. Some studies specific to glaucoma, it's been shown that brisk aerobic exercise for 30 to 45 minutes, three to four times a week, lowers your IOP and improves your blood flow to the brain and the eye. Increased physical activity has been linked to slower rates of visual field loss in glaucoma. And exercise in sedentary patients may have a, a greater effect than just increasing exercise the same amount in people who are already active. In terms of strength training, anytime you're kind of really straining, lifting heavy weights, that's why your you know, uh, doctor probably asks you not to hold your breath while you're getting your IOP checked, that increases your IOP at least temporarily. But it can be a very, very significant increase. So the, but, but it's also for a short period of time during strength training, maybe you know, a few seconds or a few minutes at a time. So this is one where I really talk to a patient about exactly what they're doing and how severe their glaucoma is. If you have very mild glaucoma, this is likely okay to continue unless you're seeing progression. But certainly if you have severe glaucoma with uh, loss of central vision or defects approaching central vision, I would definitely talk to, the, to your physician and likely limit your weight training uh, so that you're not lifting very heavy weights and limiting this IOP rise. Yoga is another one where we get a lot of questions and I definitely have had to talk to patients about modifying their yoga habits. So we know that headstands at least double IOP, if not more. And really the main risk is just the vertical distance between your heart and your eyes. So just really a gravity dependent. So even something like downward dog where your head is in the downward position is also going to raise your IOP. Once again, I think the overall risk really depends on the severity of your glaucoma. Um, if you want it to be the absolute safest practice would really be to avoid inversions and try to not have your head really below the level of your heart in any different poses, at least for any length of time. Once again, if you have severe glaucoma, um, by which I mean you know, loss of central vision or approaching central vision, then certainly avoiding these types of poses would be recommended. Um, alcohol ingestion does lower IOP. The mechanism's a little bit unclear. It may increase blood flow to the optic nerve also in some way. 
there aren't that many studies that show significant relationships between alcohol and glaucoma. Um, and like Dr. Lin was saying with marijuana, you know, these are very transient effects. And so unless you were to you know, make a drug molecule that was derived from a, a similar chemical composition but didn't have the same neurological side effects, um, there's no specific indication to significantly alter alcohol intake um, other than I think just if you look at studies overall in moderation would probably be kind of the correct answer for that one. Uh, for coffee and tea, caffeine can lead to a transient increase in IOP, but it is short-lived. And there hasn't been a relationship that's been shown between caffeine consumption and open-angle glaucoma. There is a positive association, however, between caffeine and pseudo-exfoliation glaucoma. And then very limited data on hot tea it may potentially be beneficial. Fruits and vegetables is one of those categories that patients talk about a lot and we have a lot of conversations about, and it's probably the most difficult to really study and understand. And the reason for that is certain types of fruits or certain types of vegetables have just an amazing variety in actually what the composition is uh, of those foods. And so someone says, well, I eat a lot of fruit. Well, that could mean a whole bunch of different things. Um, and trying to actually track those in a scientific way and randomize people to different groups uh, is very difficult because we're often relying on people's self-reported diets and you know portion size, all sorts of things that come into play. There's some evidence that there's a decreased glaucoma risk in women that consume fruits and vegetables that are rich in vitamins A, C, and carotenes. Sadly, there's no conclusive evidence to support chocolate. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, there's a theoretical benefit. Um, flavonoids came up as well in terms of ginkgo, so there's some possible uh, vascular endothelial dysfunction and decreased oxidative stress. So once again, in moderation, probably not a bad, bad idea, and I did see the chocolate table outside, so. <laughs> Um, black currant is an interesting one that I've seen a lot more data coming out about recently. Um, also has antioxidant properties and has been shown to uh, decrease uh, some factors in the blood that increase oxidative stress and increase retinal blood flow and lower IOP. And there was actually one study um, that showed a decreased visual field loss at two years compared to placebo as a randomized study. Um, so I would expect to see more research being done in this area in the coming years. Um, vitamins and omega-3 fatty acids, so I mean many of you have seen on the you know, aisle at the supermarket or maybe take uh, ARIDS vitamins or eye vitamins for macular degeneration. And that data is based on you know, very specific studies on very particular types of macular degeneration. And so there's no scientific evidence to support specifically the use of those medications in patients with glaucoma. Um, but some think, of course, that antioxidants are, are helpful in glaucoma. Uh, limited evidence for omega-3 fatty acids, no significant benefit, benefit demonstrated so far. So bottom line, aerobic exercise is good, um, but caution with heavy strength training and yoga with inversions, especially in advanced glaucoma. So definitely very much dependent on the stage of your glaucoma. As I said, fruits and vegetables are just too varied in composition to draw significant conclusions about, but if you're eating a healthy, balanced diet, that's certainly not a bad thing. And then at this point, no supplements or vitamins that we have enough evidence to specifically say, you know, this is what you should take for your glaucoma. So sorry, nothing, uh, no bombshell there, but uh, thank you very much for your time and inviting me to speak today.